some things on the internet. All right, Jessiana Seville here from The Kidney RD. Um, going to talk a little bit about some common terminology that you see on the internet about phosphorus. Now, before we get started, our website is kidneyrd.com. You can go there, check out some of the great resources we have there for, uh, for patients, for dietitians. Um, we love, love, love to talk about kidney disease and we love to give clarity. That is our mission. We want to give clarity around the renal diet and just advocate for how this can be a first line treatment for kidney disease. Now, this whole week we've been talking about phosphorus. So if you haven't seen the videos from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you can hashtag the kidney RD and look back on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, any of those places we've been talking about phosphorus all week. Okay. So let's go ahead and get going. Today, we're going to talk about a couple little details that are very, very important when it comes to phosphorus and some terminology that you're going to see if you're scoping around on the internet and reading about it. Now, the first thing that I want to clarify for people is that your blood work is not entirely reflective of how phosphorus is impacting your body. Some of the research shows that even as early as stage two, people are starting to have changes in their vascular system because of phosphorus and because they can't get the phosphorus out of their system. Um, and so no matter what your stage and no matter what your labs are, it's very important that you understand one very critical thing, and that is inorganic phosphates. Now, when we hear organic, a lot of times we think about organic fruit, organic vegetables, and that means they didn't put any pesticides on them. That is not at all what this is talking about. Um, organic phosphates and inorganic phosphates is something totally different. Organic phosphates means it naturally occurs in the food, and inorganic phosphates means it is a chemical phosphate that is added to the food. They're totally different. Now, the organic phosphates, we don't absorb all of those when we eat them, especially if they're bound up in fiber. So like beans and nuts and whole grains, they have a lot of phosphorus, but a lot of that phosphorus is bound up in the fibers. Things like dairy, meat, beer, those things also have phosphates, and we absorb a lot more of that. That's one reason a plant-based diet really works for a lot of people, even if you have kidney disease. You don't really have to worry so much about some of those main components of a, a plant-based diet, the beans, nuts, and whole grains, because the phosphorus you don't readily absorb. Now, the inorganic phosphates are chemical phosphates, and I've talked a little bit about them this week. The number one way that you can tell if something has a inorganic phosphate. This type of phosphate our body 100% absorbs. Even if you don't have kidney disease, you should be watching out for these because there is some research that shows that people have bone, that the population has seen a, a little rise in their um, phosphorus levels and there's been some bone demineralization because of that. But the phosphates in, in your foods are going to show up on the ingredients in the food. And those are the ones that you're going to want to look out for. I just like to call them chemical phosphates. Uh, I think that's more reflective of what they are, but they can be literally in anything. We have a really good post up on our website that goes through labels and shows you different types of foods and which ones have phosphor phosphorus added and which ones don't. Uh, trying to show a, um, a representation of how you can make a simple swap. Even things that might say organic on them, they can have inorganic phosphates. So, I mean, talk about confusing. <laughs> Labeling is really confusing. But being a good sleuth, all you have to really do is just look at the ingredients. So if you're buying anything packaged, make sure 100% you're checking the ingredients for P-H-O-S, phos. Even something like minced garlic in a jar, that little tiny jar of minced garlic, sometimes it can have phosphoric acid added to it. And you, you know, just buy fresh garlic or, or uh, find a different brand. Um, anyways, that's it for today. Just a reminder about how important it is to look for the inorganic phosphates, the chemical phosphates in your food, no matter your stage of kidney disease. That's one of the best things that you can start out with. If you are on dialysis or close to dialysis, 
and seeing that there's already some changes in your phosphorus levels and they're going up, one of the best ways to get that down is to start looking for where you might have those hidden phosphoruses in your food. Um, okay, I think that's it for today. Uh, we're here pretty much Monday through Thursday. You can also find us on uh, Facebook. You can find us on YouTube at The Kidney RD. Um, we offer a lot of great information. We choose a topic every week um, that we can clarify and add, uh, add some, uh, hopefully, <laughs> some, some help for a, a lot of different people so that they can preserve their kidney function. Um, anyways, that's it, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.